on this video I'm going to show you guys how to install your Traction Concepts limited slip conversion on your 2000 C5 Audi A6 rear diff. This will also work for a B5 A4, a B5 S4, and probably a lot of other Audis. So guys, let's dive straight into this, shall we? Good afternoon, guys. It is about 1 o'clock. It is March 10th. In the last video that I put up, you see me take the Rowdy Audi diff out. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install your Traction Concepts conversion kit. Let's get into it, shall we? All right, and we're back. Um, I didn't want to make a mess all over the place, so I got these, this is a planter drain pan. I've got all the mounts taken off. Now you don't have to take your mounts off if you don't want to. There we go. All right, what you need to first do is after you got the oil drained out of it, there's these two Allen bolts right down here. There's one on this cup and there's one on this axle cup right here. Six mil, just gonna to wanna to take both of those out. I've already loosened this one up, so I am cheating here a little bit but I did that so I can show you guys what's gonna happen. All right, so that, whoa. So you're gonna take this out, just set it off to the side, and then this axle cup is just gonna come right out, just like that. And you're gonna set it off to the side. You're gonna do another one on the other side as well, right there, and we're gonna go ahead and take that one out real fast. Now, for the record, these are not side-specific. I have got them backwards before without any problems. If you don't believe me, well, here you go. That one fits there. And that one fits over there. If you are concerned at all, go ahead and you can just take a little paint pin and just go like... Go left, and you can put a little L on that side and an R on this side, something like that. I just like to wipe everything off, make sure it's clean. Um, we are gonna aqua blast these, so these are gonna look 20 times better. So keep this in mind what they look like now, and you're gonna see how awesome they look afterwards. All right, now that we got both axle cups off and all that we are left with now is these Torx bits. Now I am going to forewarn you, if these Torx bit holes are dirty, you're going to probably strip them out. So you wanna make sure to take something down in there. Occasionally there'll be dirt and grime down inside these Torx bit holes. If there is, just take a little pick, something like this, and just kind of run it around the outside edge like so. And that's gonna get all that debris in there. And then you can just blow it out with an air gun. You are gonna need a T45. That is going to fit those. And you can get this T45 in either a 3 8 or a half inch. If you're going to use a half inch, um, try not to go full send when you blast them first trip, you know. I don't want anybody to drop it in the comments below that they've ruined their Torx bits because I didn't forewarn you. So let's get these out and then I'll show you how to take the diff out. I'm going to cut to a montage real quick and uh, I'm going to take this apart. All right, so what I found out through tearing many of many of these apart, there's this little ear here, and there's another little ear right there. Um, use those two little tabs to pop this up and off of there, okay? Also, if you want, if you have any concerns whatsoever about making sure you get this in, back in the right spot, you can just take a little paint pen again, and you can mark it like so just so you have an indexing mark of where it goes. However, I will tell you this only goes in one way, so it is really, really hard to screw this lid up. Hey, there you go. There is your cover. Put that off to the side. And there's your diff. All right, well, now we got it all out. This is the cover. And there is the actual diff. So one thing I want to note about this gear, this rear diff, is this rear diff is, about, I've personally had it for about two years, never opened it. I drained the fluid out of it and filled it back up on the side of the highway. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll put it in here someplace, but I blew up a rear diff. I actually welded the ring gear to the pinion gear. 
in one that I had welded that I drove to Wookiees in the Woods back in 2018. This one, I pulled out of a junkyard after driving four hours. Speaking of which, big shout out to my boy Kevin No and Kevin Stein for coming in clutch and driving me four hours away down into Tennessee and driving me four hours back to put a rear end in my car on the side of the highway. So guys, if you're watching this, big, big shout out to you two. You guys are the MVPs of that year. We're gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna get this disassembled and then we will come back. Also, don't forget, if you haven't ordered yours already yet, make sure to go over to tractionconcepts.com and check out the vast selection of all their conversion kits that they have. They offer them for Fords, Jaguars, Porsches, Audis, Hondas, Toyotas, Mazdas. I mean, they literally have LSD conversion kit for everything. So when you get time, go over there, make sure to check them out. There's a link in the description below for them. Also, if you use the promo code JackTrack10 at checkout, you're gonna get 10% off just for using it. So guys, I'm gonna get back to it. I'll see you here pretty soon. Day two. Hello. All right. So I know I've been recording this little bit in a few different days here, but that's because I need a couple things. First off, I need a seal. So let me show you what seal I'm talking about here. All right, so this seal right here was leaking really bad. So I went ahead and ordered two of those. Actually, I had to order four of them because the minimum order was $4. Just so you know, if you need those seals, it's cheaper to go to IBT Bearings your local bearing supply than it is to go to Audi. They're $1.95 a piece there. Granted, you have to order four of them, but you got some backups. But here's what we got. All right, so our diffs are out. I have an extra one here with me as well, but it's this thing right here. Traction Concept calls this thing, this little piece, a thrust washer. I have no idea how they got how they came up with the name thrust washer for it, but that's what they call it. So that's what we're gonna go with. So this is a thrust washer. The problem with this is, is that it's too big around. I say it's too big around because when everything goes together, take this one apart, this thrust washer does not fit in that hole. And it has to fit in there and you have to have this because this is what the axle bolts to, the axle cups bolt into. So when this is all put together and everything, those are down in there. This is in here and the axle bolt goes through there and bolts to it, right? Well, they have to sit down inside of there so that you can get the right clearance when this guy's in here. Some people will take these two, they'll sand them, they'll grind them, they'll do whatever. The reason I brought this to Stigmeyer's where I work is because we have this awesome machine right here. We have the lathe. So what I'm gonna do, instead of taking them to a belt sander or anything, is I lathe, I put this one on the lathe and turned it down. So as you can see, boom, fits. And now when you stick your gear on, when the gear is on there, now when the gear is on, it sits perfectly flush. So. Guys, if you like this video so far, make sure to go over and smash that like button. It lets me know that you guys care and that you, I am making content that you truly enjoy. So, let's get back to the show, shall we? High five to us for getting that figured out. Just something to point out. I've done some reading and a little bit of digging and I've seen people, they'll put these on a bench grinder and they'll just grind them off. Um, I really wasn't about that because of this little nip right here. There's a little nip right there. And that actually grabs the inside of the gear here. So I was trying to be very careful of to not trim that off. Something for you guys to make sure to remember when you're installing your Traction Concepts LSD is that you're gonna have to turn that down somehow, some way. Personally, I would recommend just going, getting in the yellow pages, getting on Google, whatever you use for your search media, and just go on there, find your local machine shop and be like, hey, I need these turned down. And I'm gonna show you guys how I cut this one down. That right, you guys, well, I have an idea. All right, well, there we go. Turned down, perfect. So now this will fit right down in there like so. All you gotta do is now take this one apart, which is the one that actually belongs in the car. And I'm gonna switch these gears out, these spider gears in here, because there's a lot of really bad pitting on them. Um, 
pretty common. I've seen this happen before. So I've got another set of spider gears that came out of this one and I'm gonna swap those into here. Maybe tonight we'll have this all finally assembled. And then all we're doing is waiting on our new gaskets to come in and we can pop those in real quick. We can go see how well this thing works. All right, well, it's all the time I got right now for lunch. So I guess the next time I'll see you guys is when I cut back after lunch, after work's over. So let's go. All right, well, we are done with work finally. So here's the diff. Here is the diff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to disassemble this now. So first things first is we gotta get that pin out. And the way you get that pin out is you flip this over and you're gonna see a hole right there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna find a punch. And you can set that right down in there like so. And you're gonna wanna knock this pin out. So here we go. Easy peasy. Now that you got that out, you're gonna wanna push. You can take that same punch that you just used. Don't worry, it's not going to fall out. All right, set that off to the side. And we're going to set that off to the side. We got our thrust washers. You can take both of those out. And the easiest way to get this out is just rotate it. Just rotate this around, and things are going to start falling apart. There's that one. There's going to be a little wa washer in here or bearing. And you're going to set that off to the side as well. You got your spider gear, your top one. There should be a washer on the top of here. If not, it'll be stuck on the top up there. You see it? I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there it is. There you go. You gotta get the bottom one out. Now we have a raw diff. Now we get to put it back together. All right, now that we're back, I've got all the pieces cleaned up. I've got the diff cleaned up. Here's what I found out. This ring gear, definitely gonna have to come off. The instructions here don't say anything about needing to remove the ring gear but they also the instructions also s jump from the point of cleaning everything to the point of driving the pin back in and making sure to take off those little tabs right there which kind of makes sense because every diff is a little bit different so guys i'm going to get this ring gear off real quick just so you know these bolts are right left hand thread so that means they go that way First, i lied these bolts that's in that's out oops and then you just want to walk your ring gear off after you get those bolts out. Just tap right here on this ledge. And there you go. Now we got a little bit more room to work with. All right. You guys have never known me to like just cut bits out and then, oh, here's the finished product. That's not my style. My style is showing all the hardships, all the BS, all of it so that you as a consumer and just you as a viewer know exactly what's going on. And I just sent Traction Concepts a message asking, you know, hey, is it supposed to be this way, is it not? So here's what's going on though. This is extremely tight fitting. It's not gonna just go in. Um, and I'm looking through this, it also says that I need three to five thousandths of clearance. I don't know if you guys know how big three to five thousandths is, but that's five thousandths. Five thousandths of an inch. This sheet of paper right here is four thousandths of an inch thick. The instruction manual that they sent me, this paper is four thousandths of an inch thick. So the clearancing that you're working with in here is literally as thick as this piece of paper. So for that to be a tight fit is okay, but how tight is too tight? And that's what I'm trying to find out right now. So as soon as actually, ah, look at that, they're typing. So as soon as they get back to me and let me know what's going on, I'm going to continue moving forward with this and hopefully we'll get it all done tonight. It's late though. Cross our fingers. Oh, look, I got a message back. Mill down the face of the gears just slightly, just enough so the units, the unit slides in. You will want the unit to slide in with the least amount of clearance because the kit is set up for your needs. So, you heard it from the horse's mouth. So yes, I am gonna have to mill the face of these gears down a little bit, which once again, not that big a deal. Um, they are very, very, these are hardened gears. So if you ever wanna know if something's hard, 
like if it's hardened steel or not, take a file, like so, and it just slides right across it. Steel block. See how that actually dug down into that? Versus this gear, doesn't even leave a mark. So we know that this is hardened. So I'm not gonna just be able to easily take this to the, and put this in the lathe and turn it down. That's not to say that it can't be milled. I just don't have the equipment here to mill it. So what I'm gonna do instead, take this face of the gear and uh, we're gonna put on the belt sander here and just go and I'll show you guys how it works. Sorry, headphone users, this will be loud. You notice how it's on the outside first? It's because the outside's got high spots. So if you notice, it's starting to slowly get closer and closer in. We're just gonna keep going. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Check it, getting better. Yeah, we're getting way better now. I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I like that. So, there we go. All right, so in the instructions, it doesn't say anywhere where you need to pre-lube everything, but we are gonna go ahead and do that. So I've just got a little bit of assembly lube and we're just gonna start putting it in here. You wanna make sure everything's well lubricated, that way it goes together a lot easier. All right, well, my camera's covered in assembly loop, but I got it. So after a little bit of sanding on uh, the gear faces, like I showed you earlier right there, I ended up also having to belt sand little spider gear. Not a lot, just a little. I already got the diff pins sort of in. I wanna to try to make sure you put this pin in as straight as you possibly can. And remember not to put it in backwards. It has to go right in line with this. So you wanna keep that as straight as you possibly can. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this pin in real quick. I think that's it. And we're gonna just take our pin, tap, tap, tap a Rooney. As the camera walks across the table. And there we go. According to the instructions now, at this point, it is time to pull these little pins off. So, let's pop the pins out. One. Two. And look at that. We're done. We have done our very first LSD conversion. How cool is that? Uh, guys, I am super, super stoked about this one. You have no idea. Guys, make sure if you are interested in having LSD in your Audi that never came with it, mind you, make sure to go over to tractionconcepts.com, pick yourself up what awesome LSD conversion kits for your Audi or for any number of vehicles that they support. Guys, if this video has helped you install your Traction Concepts LSD, make sure to smash that like button for me. All right, so I did realize I forgot to put something in. I forgot to put these in, but no worries. If you take your ax one of your axle holding bolts, so the I machine these down, there's a little ridge, right? I don't know if you're gonna see it right there. And there's like three of them. Now what that does is that locks in that splines inside there so that you can tighten this bolt up. But if you line it up just right, there we go. There you go, installed. Got the one in there, and we got the one in the bottom already. So. It's 100% done, and we can put the ring gear back on. Well, call this part done. There, I apologize if this video is awful to look at right now. I can see all the assembly lube on my camera. When... Day three. March 13th. So that means I've been doing this for three days. Not that it's actually taken me three days to do it. You can realistically get this done in about an hour and a half if you have everything you need ahead of time for 
this build, I would highly recommend go ahead, get two seals on order. Let's get this thing installed here. It's gonna be really, really difficult. That's a joke. It's not gonna be hard at all. First things first is we need to re-lube all of our surfaces. I did paint my case today. Just gave it a little quick touch up, nothing too fancy. Aqua blasted the rear diff, uh, the carrier mount, and we aqua blasted the cover, and then we repainted the axle cups. So it's all nice and pretty. Everything's ready to go back together, and let's get into it, shall we? Let's jump to a montage right now. indexed all of these bolts so that next time I get in here I'll be able to verify or not if anything is moved or if it's still in place. We're gonna get the cover back on this and then we will start bolting everything else on. Also when you get a chance clean your bolts up um, just gonna make for a better installation. All right something to note before we put this cover on here is it can only go on one way like so if, no matter how many ways you try to screw this up if you look like I was saying before, these holes aren't exactly the same offset, so they're, it's only going to go on one direction. When you put this on, you want to make sure that your bearing is centered and lube your outer seal here. Ain't that kind of crazy? Well, we have officially finished it. It's all together. Everything is working like it should. And guys, I am super stoked to be trying this. Once again, I wanna give a huge shout out to Traction Concepts who helped sponsor this video and who provided us with an awesome product that we now get to thrash. If you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button. If you guys wanna see more content like this one, Please make sure to smash the subscribe button and you guys will get notified of all the latest content that we put up. We do a lot of DIY videos and we do a lot of breaking of Audis around here. So guys, we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.